بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful لا اله الا الله لا Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Respected viewers, welcome once again to our program on synopsis of the ayats recited during tarawih. Today we are doing the 19 juz of the Holy Quran which coincides with Surah Al-Furqan. In the second page of the 19 juz, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala refers to why Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has not reveal the Quran at once to our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are aware that Allah Ta'ala had kept the Quran in the protected tablets in Lawah Mahfuz and then according to the needs of the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed it upon our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over 23 years. Allah Ta'ala therefore says وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا The disbelievers ask why was the Quran not revealed at once? Then tell unto them, لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُعَادَكْ Various reasons. One of the reasons made mention in this verse is to strengthen and to make your heart firm upon the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many wisdoms. One of the wisdom is Allah ta'ala many a times wanted to prohibit something gradually because people were accustomed to it. So if the Quran would have been revealed at once, that gradual process of change would not have been able to be implemented. One of the reasons. Another reason is many a times there were incidents that happened at the time of our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu life and the revelation of the ayats coincided and was applicable only to that event which led people to take lessons with regard to it. So therefore it was revealed after a particular incident. If it was revealed at once that would not have been possible. And here Allah Ta'ala says that when we had revealed it at once then the aspect of keeping your heart firm would not have been achieved as well as it has been achieved. That whenever our beloved Nabi Karim Wasallam used to feel a need for guidance, used to feel a need for the ayat of Almighty Allah, the verse of Almighty Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to send it at the appropriate time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the surah towards the end of the surah, Allah ta'ala speaks about Ibadur Rahman. And Ibadur Rahman is a description Allah ta'ala gives to his honorable and very favored servants. In verse 63, Allah Ta'ala speaks about the qualities of his honorable and very favored service, servants. Wa ibadur Rahman and the, the servants of the Rahman are those yamshuna ala al-ardi hawna. When they walk on the earth, they walk with humility and they are humble. They don't walk with pride and arrogance, which sometimes is prevalent and it is so, something so said. So the favorite bondsman of Almighty Allah, Allah Ta'ala says they walk with humbleness and humility. وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And when the ignorant, they engage them. قَالُوا سَلَامًا They say, Salam be upon you. Peace be upon you. We don't want to engage in any type of argument with you. Many a time, silence is the best reply to fools. And it is something that Allah Ta'ala Himself has made mention of. And Allah Ta'ala says that when the ignorant try to engage you in something, yes, there's a time for engagement. Yes, there's a time to speak to someone. But someone sometimes... Even if an ignorant person or according to Mufti Shafi Sabrahmatullah sometimes a knowledgeable person behaves ignorantly, then sometimes says, Salam be upon you, you on your way, me on my way, I don't want to engage in an argument. There's a humorous incident of Socrates. They said Socrates one day was sitting when his wife became very angry with him, started nagging him, and Socrates just remained silent and he didn't say anything. And the wife, out of extreme frustration because expecting the husband to react, didn't react, she took a bucket of water and threw it upon Socrates. And as he threw it, she threw it upon Socrates, he looked up towards the heaven and said, it has been truly said that after thunder there is shower. She was angry and here is a bucket of water that came down. Nevertheless, Allah Ta'ala speaks about وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا That when the jahil and the ignorant engage you, say peace unto them. The pious bondsman of Almighty Allah وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا They spend their nights in sajda and qiyam. 
This is a reference towards the Hajjud. When Nabi Kareem Sallallahu had said, take towards the Hajjud. It has been the way of the pious people of the past. And Allah Ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ The pious bondsmen of Almighty Allah, they make dua to Almighty Allah. And part of their dua is, Oh Allah, turn, turn the fire of Jahannam away from us. Turn us from the fire of Jahannam. إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا Because the fire of Jahannam and the adab of Jahannam is a great burden. Something that we will not be able to bear. Therefore Allah, turn us away. Even a pious person, he always seeks Allah's protection from punishment of Almighty Allah. No human being, and no matter how pious he might regard himself to be, regards himself safe and immune from the punishment of Allah. Allah Ta'ala says, Inna adaba rabbihim ghayru ma'moon. The pious bondsmen don't regard themselves safe from the punishment of Almighty Allah. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا عَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا Verily the pious bondsmen of Almighty Allah, when they spend, their spending is between the two extremes. The middle path is always the best path to be. The middle path is always the best, best path to be. So those bondsmen of Almighty Allah, when they spend, they are neither miserly, neither are they extravagant. Their spending habits is between the two extremes of miserliness and extravagance. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. The pious bondsmen of Almighty Allah, they do not associate partners to Almighty Allah. وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ They do not take the life of anyone whose life is sacred to take and not permissible to take. وَلَا يَزْنُونَ They do not commit adultery. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا Whoever does these evil things have done something that is worthy of reproach and worthy of recompense from Almighty Allah. Recompense meaning in this form of punishment from Almighty Allah or in the form of rebuke from Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except the one who turns towards Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. Illa man tab, one who repents and he brings iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change his previous evil deeds into good deeds. Allah Ta'ala then goes on to make mention وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْحَدُونَ الزُّورِ That verily the pious bondsman of Almighty Allah لا يَشْحَدُونَ الزُّورِ The ulama have given two interpretations of this verse. One is they do not give false testimony or they do not take part in something that is false. They do not take part in false gatherings. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّهُ مَرُّوا كِرَامَ When they pass gatherings of futility, they pass by with honorable avoidance. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ when they are reminded about Allah Ta'ala's commands, when they are reminded about Almighty Allah, they do not turn a blind, they don't turn a blind eye, or they do not turn away from it in terms of staying away from the lessons that people try and give them. Allah Ta'ala says when they are reminded about Allah, they become reminded. They don't become blind and deaf away and become heedless of Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ عِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ they make this dua, رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنَ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ عَيُنْ Who Allah make our spouses and our children the coolness of our eyes. Hassan Basri Rahmatullah Ali says, the coolness of the eyes of the parents is to see their children and their spouses doing good deeds. SubhanAllah. And Allah Ta'ala goes on to make mention, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Oh Allah, make us the imam of pious people. Make us the imam of pious people. Make us the leader of pious people. What is meant here, each and every one has got a sense of responsibility. كُلُّكُمْ رَعِينَ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَتِهِ For example, if you are the husband, or you are the father, or you are the mother, you have certain sense of responsibility. And Allah Ta'ala says, O oh Allah, make us that those who are underneath us are pious, and they adhere to what we say. These are some of the qualities of the Ibadur Rahman, which Allah Ta'ala so beautifully puts, puts it for us to take lessons and to put into our daily lives so that inshallah we can also become the favorite bondsman of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the quarter of the Jews, Allah Ta'ala starts a surah known as Surah Al-Shu'ara. In the third verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about our beloved Nabi Kareem Sallallahu concern for people. And Allah says, لَأَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَفْسَكَ أَلَّا يَكُونُ مُؤْمِنِينَ oh, oh Prophet of Almighty Allah, will you collapse, collapse in grief by people not accepting Islam. Such was the passion that Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi had for people to accept the truth. And Allah Ta'ala had to say, will you collapse in grief? Do we have the same passion? Do we have the same concern with regard to the righteousness of other people the way our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi showed? And as we go on in verse 78, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala speaks about the beautiful dua of Hazrat Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wa Salam. And Allah Ta'ala says, remember the time when Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wa Salam made dua to Almighty Allah. 
Oh Allah, you created me and you guided me. You gave me food to drink, water. You gave me food to eat and water to drink. When I become sick, you cured me. As Ibrahim al Islam was so respectful. He didn't say, Wallah, when you make me sick. He said, when I become sick, you cure me. Wallah, you meet me, thumma yuhin. Life and death is in your hand. Wallah, atma'u. I have the full expectation that you will forgive my shortcomings on the day of Qiyamah. Although we believe, the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam are free from sin. Rabbi habli hukmahu wa alhiqni bi salihin. O Allah, grant me wisdom. And let me be resurrected and be joined with the pious people. Wa ja'alli lisana sidqin fil akhirin. O Allah, Grant me honorable mention amongst the pious people. This is also an objective that we seek to pursue. That we have honorable mention in the gathering of the pious people. And let me be amongst the people who will inherit Jannah. What a beautiful dua Ibrahim made. In the half, from the half of the Jews, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about some of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam addressing their people and said, Ya qawm. Almost for three or four rukus, we find something very similar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya qawm, la asalukum alayhi ajra. Oh my tribe, la asalukum alayhi ajra. I don't ask of you any reward and recompense. My reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. But each and every one wants, wants rewards. And we all like freebies. Especially, you know, we, we sometimes who are Pakistani Indian origin, we will go spend 20 rand petrol to go and get an item for free for 5 rand. That is the situation. Allah Ta'ala says, be true to your instincts. Ask for reward. But don't ask it from human being. Ask it from Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So each and every Nabi told his tribe, Ya qawm la asalukum alayhi ajra. Oh my tribe, I don't ask any reward from you. In ajriya illa ala Allah. My reward is with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And one common thing the Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam told their people, which Allah from the half of the surah, for almost three or four rukus makes mention that every Nabi told his people, Fattakullah, fear Allah, and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the people went against the Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam, Allah destroyed them, and the four, three, four rukus ends up for this verse, inna fi dhalika la ayah. In these are signs from, from Allah, wa ma kana akthar wa mu'mineen. But majority of the people do not want to believe. Towards the end of the surah, Allah Ta'ala speaks on the name of the surah. Allah Ta'ala addresses where the surah is entitled. As we are now aware, aware that the surah is known, surah to shu'ara, which means the poets. And Allah Ta'ala speaks about two types of poets. Those poets whose poetry leads people towards immorality, wrong transgression. Many a times they are in the majority. Therefore Allah Ta'ala says, وَالشُعَرَاءُ يَتَّبِعُهُمُ الْغَاوُونَ The poets are followed by people who are astray. Then Allah Ta'ala makes an exception. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ عَامَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَانْتَصَرُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا ظُلِمُوا Except those poets whose poetry leads people towards righteousness and leads people towards addressing the plight of those people who are oppressed. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala in Surah Al-Shu'ara entitled the chapter on the poets Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala speaks about the poets and the two different types of poets. In the last quarter of the Jews, Allah Ta'ala starts surah known as Surah Al-Namal. Namal means an ant. And why did Allah Ta'ala call the surah Namal? Because of an incident of the ants of the Prophet Sulaiman Allah Ta'ala had granted tremendous amount of favors upon Hazrat Sulaiman given him a kingdom that could not be matched. And then Allah Ta'ala granted him the ability to listen to the conversation of the animals. And Allah Ta'ala makes mention with regard to it. Until when Sulaiman one day was passing by an ant hill. Qalat namla. And the ants started speaking to one another. Ya you are naml. O ants, udkhulu masakinakum. Get into the deepest recesses of your homes. La yahtimannakum Sulaimanu wa junudu. Sulaiman would not know that you are there. And he would tread upon you, destroying you in the process. فَتَبَسَّ مَضَاحِكَ مِنْ قَوْلِهَا Hazrat Suleiman understood the conversation and he smiled. And he thanked Almighty Allah with his beautiful words. And he said, رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْ عَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَي Oh Allah, I show my gratefulness to the favors you had bestowed upon me and upon my family. وَنَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْدَاوَ And given us the ability to do righteous deeds which led to your happiness. Then Allah Ta'ala makes mention, Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam found that one of his birds, the hoopoo, was missing. What has happened? I can't see who the hoopoo hood. 
and hudhud is the hoopoo bird. And Allah, he says, shadidan, I'm going to discipline him until he gives me a correct reason for his absence. And then Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam, when he was there, Hupu came and he came and give. Inni wajattum ra'atan tamlikum wa utiyat min kulli shay wa laha arshun azim. He came and give a report about a tribe. And he said, I found a tribe. I found a tribe. Imra'atan tamlikuhum. I found that that tribe was led by a woman. Even a bird found it could be such surprising. And if inni wajattum ra'atan tamlikuhum wa utiyat min kulli shay, she was given everything. And she had a tremendous throne. But what was the sad thing? I found her and her tribe, they were worshipping the sun instead of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sulaiman was salam to test the authenticity of what the hoopoo was saying. He said, I will see what you are saying. I will write a letter to the queen and to the leader of this tribe. And that was Queen Sheba. And Allah Ta'ala makes mention, kitabi hada. Take this letter. And in that letter was, Ya ayu al malaw inni ulqiya ilayya kitabun karim innahu min Sulaiman wa innahu bismillahi rahmani rahim. This letter comes from Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam and this letter is bismillahi rahmani rahim in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful Allah ta'alu alayya wa atuni muslimin. Come to me in submission and do not be rebellious. Queen Shiva when she receives this letter makes mashwara to her courtiers and instead of being confrontational they send gifts. Sulaiman sent better gifts. And then she decides to come into the gathering and in the service of Hazrat Sulaiman to even impress her further. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sulaiman asked one of the people who were under his authority that can you bring her throne to me before she comes? And before the blinking of an eye, Sulaiman in his presence the throne was brought before Sulaiman So when a queen Sheba comes, she sees her own throne in the presence and in the gathering of Sulaiman She is awed and she is impressed with Hazrat Sulaiman greatness. And thereafter, uh, the incident is a long incident. We are just sort of cutting it brief. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa aslam tu maa Sulaiman alillahi rabbil alamin." Then she realized her folly of worshiping the sun instead of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah ta'ala said towards the end of the incident which happens almost towards the end of the Jews Allah ta'ala says she makes dua Rabbi inni zalam tu nafsi O Allah I have done wrong wa aslam tu ma'a Sulaiman and she brings Iman with Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam upon Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of the world may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also make us in a similar manner always submit to the will and the greatness of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين